What's up my friend, welcome back to another video. And today I wanted to share with you a really simple way to use contact. So me personally, I'm a very simple person when it comes to music creation. I prefer to just load in my instruments and get going, right? I don't really like to tweak and fiddle around with knobs and stuff because I find it drains a lot of my energy, takes a lot of time. So what I wanna do is share with you a really simple way so that you can use contact as a producer and hopefully it gives you some ideas if you're struggling with some of the same things. So the first thing you wanna keep in mind is when you're loading contact, first of all, this is contact seven. So if you have contact seven or above, you might see an interface really, really simple uh, or similar to this, but the previous versions of contact work in kind of a similar way. So there's gonna be some overlap between what I'm talking about and what you already have. Uh, but essentially, when you open up contacts, there's gonna be something you wanna consider, and that is whether you wanna open just one stereo instance, or do you want it to have multiple outputs, 16 to be exact. And the reason this matters is because there is a workflow difference in the orchestral world at least, where you can have either one contact instance for each instrument you plan on loading. So one contact instance for uh, violins, another one for violins two, another one for vi violas and so on. Or you can host multiple instrument patches within the same contact instance. And there's a you know a bit of a debate on which one is better. I don't really think there's a right or wrong. I personally just prefer going with the latter option of having one contact instance and then loading multiple instruments within. It keeps things a little simpler for me having less contact instances to worry about. It doesn't really make too much of a difference on the processing power and the loading times as far as what I've experienced. So we're gonna go with that option and that will allow me to open multiple tracks and logic to correspond with the instruments that I choose, okay? so. Off the top here, when you open the interface, you can see that there are all these instruments, but let's say you wanna focus on just one developer or one company. So let's say I wanna use Cine samples. I can click Cine samples, and now they show me all the possible libraries available to me, right? I can choose Audio Imperia, same thing. Now, of course, you always have the option to type in your own samples your, uh, yourself. Like if you know the name of a specific patch or a type of instrument you want, you can just go into there and type it up yourself. Or you can click here, sound type, and then you have bass, bow strings, brass, drums, right? So let's say I want some drum samples. I can click that and then go through all these different available options to me. These libraries all contain drums to some degree. And then these are all the different available patches that you have as well. And you can favorite certain patches if you wanna see them within a list. Um, and have them really easily available if you wanna load them in, right? And then you can also sort by character. So do you want acoustic stuff, uh, uh, additive stuff, airy, la layered, um, metallic, melodic stuff, right? All of that stuff is available to you. So let's just say we settle on an instrument. I wanna reset, I wanna choose a Flatus chapter one strings. Let's say I want that library. And then the patch I wanna load in is angelic strings. So I just double click and then wait a second for it to load and it's gonna show up here as the patch. All right, so here is the patch. You can see it's currently loading right now. And when this yellow bar is showing, it basically shows that the samples are currently loading in progress. So when it actually reaches the end, it's gonna turn white, and then that's how you know all the samples are loaded and you won't have any stutters when you go to play your instrument. So I'm gonna wait till it loads to white, there we go. And now I can start playing and it's gonna sound Right, and this patch is particularly beautiful. It's a combination of strings, but you also get choirs there as well. So it's kind of cool. Now, you might be used to the typical interface of having all your libraries loaded to the side. So if you wanna see that view, then you can just click this little toggle right here, and it shows you all the libraries on the side. And this is the typical contact interface we're used to with the contact player, the free version, and the paid version. If you wanna resize contact, you can just go down to the bottom right of the instance and then drag click those uh, you know, two lines and then drag uh, smaller and bigger. And a lot of, uh, just a little side note, some third-party developers created their own plugins, like their own samplers that you can resize as much or as little as you want, but it's nice when contact gives you that option as well, okay? So let's say you wanna record some stuff, then you can do so. You can click record in your DAW. Currently I'm recording my voice so that I'm not, that's not possible, but uh, if you wanna record some stuff, you can do so, and then it's going to show in your DAW. Now, let's say we wanna create multiple tracks. This is the last thing I'll share here, because then after this, you're pretty much set up to go, right? Let's say we wanna uh, load in multiple instruments. Let's say I want a piano in here as well. So I'm just gonna load in my standard Cine piano patch here. Double click, and now it loads in, okay. But at the moment, they're set to Omni, which just means that any note that I click, it's going to trigger 
both of these patches. So you hear the piano sound, but you also hear the angelic strings patch here as well. So both of these are outputting to the same channel. What I want to do is create separate channels so that each instrument is on its own separate channel. So here I go to the mixer view. And here you can see there's a little plus sign, right? So I'm going to click until I open up all my available instances, in this case, 15 additional auxiliary tracks. Now I'm going to click and drag. So I highlight all of them and I'm going to right click to create a track in Logic. So now you can see if I close this mixer view, I have all my additional tracks here, right? So this first track can host just the strings if I wanted to, and now the av uh, additional available tracks can host any other instruments I want up to 15 additional instruments. So here, I'm gonna go up to the mini channel output. I'm gonna click that and go to port A, and I'm gonna set that as channel number one. So that means this first contact instance track is dedicated to um, the the uh, the angelic strings patch, but you still hear the cine piano patch because it's set to Omni. So to get that working on its own channel, I'm going to go to channel number two, and now the second track. Okay. So now you can hear the piano. And the thing you want to make sure is that the track you're currently playing is record enabled. So you can see this R is highlighted in red. That means I can now hear the samples, I can trigger them, and I can also record them in my DAW if I wanted to. Really, really important. So if you have multiple of them highlighted, you're going to hear multiple instruments as well. You can hear the piano and the strings playing together. So you just want to make sure that only the track you want to hear and play is the one that's record enabled, at least in Logic, right? So. There we go. Um, and the other thing you want to make sure is that any track you load, you want to double check the track output, right? So these ones I've already set up correctly. Um, the first one is going out from the main track with the contact instance, but then these additional ones have to go in order, right? Two all the way down to 16. And just make sure you can also double check the track itself in Logic. This one is contact three to four output. You can see these are the additional auxiliary tracks we added in. So the first one here is set up correctly because it's selected to that first auxiliary track. And that's pretty much it. It's really, really simple. And again, I personally like to just get up and running. So I'll select whatever patches I want, double click them, load them in, make sure the track output is correct. Go to that track, make sure it's record enabled and then record my, my pieces as I need to. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, you can see very, very simple. I don't really go into the back end and tweak with all the, the envelopes and you know the attacks and the releases. I just like to use the samples that I know and love that get me a good sound, a good result right away. And I just write with those, you know? So knowing that um, it makes things a lot less overwhelming. It just simplifies the entire process. And I think that's really crucial if you're trying to stay motivated and you're trying to work in an efficient manner, you wanna choose a workflow that really just suits you and uses the instruments in an effective way. And I think this method is simple enough to do that. So if you're curious about the sample libraries I do use on a regular basis, like all the strings, the, the woodwinds, all the stuff that I use in my projects, I wanna give you my sample library buyer's guide. It's a completely free downloadable PDF you can grab right away in the description box and it goes over the instruments that I personally use and I've also put it in the prices and the utilities as well so you understand how I use them and some considerations before you purchase your next orchestral sample library. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate you watching. I'll catch you in the next video and I'll see you very soon. Take care.